Did Devontae Adams get duped into going to the Jets? I'm retired Raiders linebacker. I want to talk about his most recent press conference today, the impassioned speech he gave after the Jets lost, calling things out last week. What that means to just the reality, how real team culture is, what it means to the Jets, and also what it means to the Raiders and Devontae Adams himself. Let's just watch it real quick, and then we'll talk about it. It's not really my personality um, to, to see something that's, that's not right and to just let it go on, regardless of whether it's from the coaches, players, whoever. So there's, there's a lack of energy and urgency out there. I've, I've played on teams that have that winning culture, and I had reservations about speaking up too early and, and being too vocal too, too early. It's just a waste to, to have everybody out there and you know to have a dead sideline like that. Breeze catch a ball and go 60, and we, don't, we, we can't feed off none of the energy. And those type of players are supposed to be contagious for the rest of the team. Now, I've been part of you know, the Raiders. We didn't win a whole hell of a lot, but you know at the end of the game, guys are making plays. We still dapping one another up and you know playing for, for our pride if nothing else didn't feel like a whole lot of fun was being had but the first step is me bringing awareness to it and um, you know guys were mature about it and I can see it in everybody's eyes that it was something that they had never heard or been exposed to and you know that's that's part of the problem you know regardless if I just got here I'm, I'm a leader of this football team and you know whether or not every single person in there sees it that way that's how I see it and that's, that's my responsibility and uh, that's something that I take serious. Devontae Adams said a whole lot more than it seems on the surface there's so many things to touch on here but I'm just going to touch on a few things that he said the first one he said is He's been with you know winning team and winning culture before. He's talking about the Packers, unfortunately, not the Raiders. Obviously, he's talking about his time with the Packers. They had a winning culture. That warped me back to someone I played with who used to play on the Packers. And this was my rookie year. I'm standing next to Matt Giordano in the cold tub, the Raiders facility back then. We had a standing cold tub, contrast hot tub. And, um, and I laughed. He looked at me and said, hey, shh, don't, don't do that. You don't, you don't want to hear co have coaches hear you laughing, you know, that kind of thing. And I really respect Matt. And um, he was a great guy, and he played his heart out. And I was like, dude, oh, shoot, yeah, you're right. Because I had gotten caught up a little bit because I don't know anything but what I know coming out of college into the NFL other than I guess this is how the NFL is. Because I, I was already in a little bit of a culture shock. I came from a program that... I wanted to transfer out. We were so bad when I got to San Diego State. We brought in Brady Hoke. He, he tore down everything that was that culture and all, got all the soft guys out and just made us these hardened dudes. That with Aaron Wellman, the strength coach now for the New York Giants. I mean, made us into men, you know, and it was like this fraternity and this buy-in. It's you get in or you get out. And we were so, like, if we lost, man, that was a rough few days and it was everything was pretty solemn and it wasn't cool to just joke you know so I get to the league you go through preseason you think well you know I guess it's preseason so maybe that's why the guys are so lax you know uh, if we lose it's not there they always talk about this is more for you know guys trying to make the team it's not the starters not the real games it's maybe that's why that's that way and then we go through our first game week one we lose to the Chargers you know, and you hear, you know, big vets and they say, you don't want to get too high, don't get too low. It's a long season. It's a marathon. You know, let's get back at it, whatever. But then, you know, guys are joking around and blah, blah, blah. And, and so that was a little shocking. So then you, you just kind of, well, I guess this is the league. You know, guys are getting paid millions of dollars and, um, you know, it's, you're, it's not the same dynamic of the coach to pl player slash student of, co you know, college where you get out of line, you're going to be doing sled pushes across the 100-yard field, you know, until you vomit. They don't have that kind of leverage. So maybe this is just how it is. It's a business. Now we're grown men. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. So this is maybe a couple few days after that loss, and I, I chuckle, and, and he gets at me a little bit, and I appreciated it. And I was like, yeah, you know, hey, this is being kind of weird. You know, is, it, is this normal? And Matt says, no, this is not normal, okay? When I was with the Packers, it was like somebody died after we lost. I was like, I freaking knew it. I knew it, you know, and I wanted that and I missed that. It just reminded me of that team culture. I'm not saying everything was bad and it was, you know, let's point the fingers and do all that. That's all I knew until it wasn't, you know, and so I appreciated that memory. But team culture is, is very, very real and there is an energy to it. Um, and so the other piece that Devontae said there is, you know, what I'm not a guy that holds back on things, but I did have reservations of speaking too early. I just got here, but I could kind of vibe that something needed to be said. And so you, you know that he's already uncomfortable and he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to be that guy that comes in and makes it seem like, oh, I'm trying to make, make it about me. 
because there is a level of that. Any, anytime you're in a new environment, you're, around a new, you're on a new team, you're around new people, there is that piece inside of a lot of people, in most people's psychology, that they want to assert themselves. They want to show, hey, I am a, you know, I'm a great leader, I'm a this, I'm a that. I don't, I don't get that vibe from Devante. And, and what, it t- what it told me, I've been around a lot of guys to where I can kind of sense energy. And you, but Devante's been in the league for, what, a decade now? He's not an ASD guy, as I like to say it. He's not an attention-seeking disorder type of dude, okay? I think it was so bad in that locker room. The culture is so bad that he was shocked by it, which is why I'm kind of thinking, and he's saying, screw it, dude. I, I got to win. We don't, we don't have much time. I'm going to say something because this is, this is bull crap. Something needs to change here. So it tells me he was shocked by it. It tells me that that's been the way it's been for a while. He said it was low energy. People weren't feed, you know, celebrating on these big, you know, Brees Hall's run, and um, you know, you feed off of that energy. And and he said when you know when he said it, it was as if like he could sense in their eyes intuitively, like oh, they haven't heard this before. They haven't been exposed to this before. And so that means Devante was kind of shocked by this. He's like, I couldn't be too hard on him because they, you know, they didn't, they hadn't quite heard this type of thing before. But if it happens again, that's an issue. The whole thing is a big issue. I mean, I'm sure it's like, where has Aaron Rodgers been on this? There's all ty- types of different leaders. I know Aaron Rodgers is more stoic. He's a man of fewer words. He leads by example, but he's a fiery guy. He gets after people. He he can do those. So. One, I could also see potentially the reservation of, you know, I'm not going to speak up because this is Aaron's team. He's going to get to it. But he got to it before Aaron. And so I, the conversations between him and Aaron over this time, it, it must have not come up that, hey, this is what the culture's like. Otherwise, why would Devontae have, have done all that? And even Aaron himself had said, you know, that of my 20 years in the NFL, like it was the realest speech I'd ever heard. Um. I don't have all the facts. None of us do. We weren't in that locker room. So I'm not going out here saying, oh, Aaron Rodgers is, you know, did the wrong thing or this guy or pointing fingers. We don't know what we don't know. DeMonte said something else that was really profound to me and made me respect him a whole lot more and kind of realize why he's DeMonte Adams. He said, I'm a leader of this team. Now, whether that's how everyone else sees it or not, that's how I see it. That's strong on so many levels. But it's those guys that become culture creators. And he had mentioned in the, in the interview, like, I'm here to create a strong culture, you know. Um, it's the guys like that, and I kind of referenced this a little bit in the JPJ video, you know, what I see for him growing into. It's the guys that they can be down 40 points. They could have been embarrassed in the game. They could have played their worst game or whatever. But you know, and everybody else on that field knows, and you have to respect them, like they're going to keep coming after you. They're going to come after you if they're playing for pride. And he had mentioned that with the Raiders. He said, damn, you know, I, I didn't have many wins over there, but at least we were dapping each other up. We fed off the energy. We were celebrating big plays, and we were playing for a matter of pride. I was encouraged to hear that. Now it's like, how much encouragement do you take from that? Our culture is better than the Jets. Okay, big whoop. We don't know what the difference is there, but it was definitely big enough for Devontae Adams to push against his reluctance to speak up and be that guy of hopping in and trying, you know, asserting himself. And you know, who, who's this guy? Think he just got here? He's going to tell us what he he fought through all that because their their culture was bad enough. For him to have to say something, game one. So for me, it tells me there is a culture in the in the Raiders locker room, and it's probably stronger than we think, and it's probably not the biggest um, component to our our losing. I, again, I don't see a guy like Max Crosby being in the Raiders locker room, allowing venomous, low energy, um, poisonous people keep doing what they're doing. He's too strong-minded of a guy, but he's also too outspoken to allow that kind of thing to to continue. Um, There's certain guys that are culture creators like that. It also kind of makes me think, shoot, we lost that in in Devontae on our team. You know, who, who knows how much of an impact he was having? I'll tell you one thing from a player's perspective, anybody that's had that kind of success 
and been that consistent and is that serious and has that much love for the game, you respect the heck out of him and you play harder when he's around, you know? Not that you play harder, you, you, you want to perform well because, because he's with you, because he's watching. You, wanna, you want, don't wanna let those guys down. That's the kind of presence he is. So, you know, there's, there's levels to it. There's, you know, one, you're a great player. Devontae Adams is that. He's talented, great, has a great resume. Two, you know what a winning culture is, and therefore you know what, what, what ones are not. Um, three, you're willing to say something about it. Those are the culture creators. Another part of the, the leadership aspect of it is I guarantee they will see him as a leader. At the end of the day, people treat you the way you allow them to treat you based on how you think about yourself. If you know you're a leader, if you know you're a dog, if you know you're this, that, people are going to sense that, one, and if they don't, you know, and they say something wrong, you're going to bark back, you're going to, over time, you come out. Who you are comes out to other people and they start to treat you how you are between the years. So much of this game, so much more than people realize, they just want to say, oh, we don't have enough talent. You know, this guy, you know, we don't have enough speed. Look at their 40 times. Look at this. Why do we do this with the, with anybody in the league could have a complete resurgence of their career just by taking care of this between the years. Man, I wish I would have worked with sports psychologists when I was playing. I didn't believe any of that back then. Those are some of my thoughts about what he said. Again, on the surface, he said what he said, and that's enough to grab the attention of the media and people are gonna talk about it, but there's so much underneath why he said what he said. I thought it was really, really interesting. It says a lot about, again, the Jets. It says a lot about how the Raiders compare to the Jets in, that, in the culture, in the locker room. It says a lot about what hasn't been being said in that locker room, in that culture. Um, and to me, it just re confirms the reality of team culture and how important it is that you have players that lead that culture. There is the piece of, you know, a team is an extension of its head coach, but it's not enough to just have a great head coach who sets, there has to be players in, in place to influence the buy-in of what that head coach is, is putting off. Um, there are, you know, if you've been on a, I've been on losing teams with San Diego State, with the Raiders, and I remember even in college, it's like you kind of always knew when a, a meeting was called and they had the captain basically come meet with all the coaches and say, hey, talk, talk to them about this. Those meetings don't hit the same way. You got to have guys that are dogs, that walk it through and through, that think for themselves and are their own mouthpiece and will call people out are genuine, you have a few of those, it gets everybody on board to this mindset of get in or get out. So much of it is mental, so much of it is the intangibles and having those, those chess pieces in place of the players leading and, and having the right leadership all throughout the building. Um, it's just that intangible power. You can't quantify it, but it's realer than real. I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, not just because that's the YouTube thing to say. I know I don't have any all the details on, on anything that I talk about. None of us do because we're not in the locker room, but even there's just stuff on the internet. I don't have a, a ton of time every day with two kids and a whole bunch of stuff and auditions coming in and a lot of plates that I'm, that I'm balancing uh, to, to be well-versed. If there's anything I left out, let me know. Um, but yeah, I want to hear, hear about it. This whole thing is really interesting to me. Peace out.